God is good. All the time and all the time, God is good. Good morning and welcome to worship. It's good to see you on this United Women in Faith Sunday. So um, just a lot, um, a lot to going on, a lot that is in here that you can and want to read. I won't say should. I don't shit on you if I don't have to. <coughs> so you will want to read these. Um, I'm going to lift up a couple of things to remind you, and then there's a couple of folks who have announcements to share with us. Um, after worship this morning, there's an open house for us offered by Math Senior Connection Center. You know, they were in the courtyard, off of the courtyard where we had upper worship. It is important. Okay, I'm just going to say it's important. So even if you can only walk through five minutes, it's important. So thank you. Um, and thank Rath Senior Connections for hosting us. Um, two Sundays from now, the first Sunday in November, November 6th, it is our Sunday when we celebrate All Saints Sunday. So we have our, a tradition of reading the names of persons who have died since last All Saints Sunday. There is a list um, in the narthex that has folks that have died that were a part of this congregation. But you are welcome to add family and friends um, to that list, and we will read their names. And if you forget and don't remember to sign the list, you can call the office or email, and we will um, add their names. So um, it's always a very special Sunday and a special time, so I hope you will enter into that and share in that. What else? Let me just go ahead. Nancy, you are bright and ready. <laughs> I am your official commercial. When Trump or Treat started, I've been trying to count how many years that I've been, but I have collected so much stuff because I have a theme every year. So some of you have been saying, well, but I don't really need to decorate my car with, but, hmm. So now, downstairs in the fellowship hall, it's plenty of stuff for you all to choose from. So I'm going to go down there at the end of the service, and I'll be there next Sunday, and you come and choose from my stuff that I'm not using, and you come and you decorate that car. Because... There's nothing more fun than watching these children. And we're starting new after two years, and I'm excited. I want you to be excited. I know the kids are excited. Don't, don't, we don't have to put in chocolate candy. It just melts. Even if it says nerd, if it says uh, smarties, if it says juju beans, anything that is cheap. Just go buy in that $20 of bag candy. Get the stuff. They don't care. It's so that's my lecture, my commercial. We're starting at 6, we go to 7.30. Right now I have 14 people signed up for cars, but <clears throat> I'd really like 20. Just saying. So <laughs> I did this for y'all to remind you that it's all about the kids. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Nancy. <laughs> brings their own unique gifts and talents to their work. 
And that in turn supports and strengthens our good works as a church. Each person performs their respective roles capably. Sometimes they work behind the scenes so effectively that we daily notice what they're doing. And then other times they work seamlessly as a team so that our worship experience is a, a coherent praise to God. We are indeed so blessed by the richness of talents of our pastor and staff. So I renew this morning the invitation to acknowledge them and to express our gratitude. Thank you. So, again, this is United Women in Faith Sunday, and we have a guest uh, speaker who Jenny will introduce her more formally, but we welcome Shari Gillis, who's the district president of United Women in Faith. Um, and just a shout out to the different circles and the leadership of United Women in Faith. Um, and as I told Shari this morning, our unit rocks. And so, of course, we have a United Women in Faith Sunday. <laughs> Let's pray together. God, thank you so much for the gift of gathering in the sanctuary, gathering together on this Sabbath. And we know that you meet us in this place. Thank you for your spirit that moves among us, always longing to draw us closer, always longing to offer a word, um, a message that is just what we need to hear on this day. We give thanks. Amen.
Please rise if you are able for the call to worship. We are called into God's caring community. We are called to more than we can perish. We are called into a place of sunshine and rain. We are called to celebrate a time of surplus and deficit. We are called into a spirit of wholeness and struggle. We are called to seek compassion and tenderness. The hymn of praise is number 547, O Church of God United. confession and join me. Let us confess. We are so focused, God of grace and mercy, on our own relationships, our own communities, that we fail to see the broader world. We pursue connections that make us feel good, better our needs, or strengthen our positions. We praise our fingers and we draw out our neighbors. You have just and righteous rage in by our institutions today. The communities you have sustained for generations are drained and exhausted, pushing us out of character. Forgive us for our selfishness. The assurance of pardon. You call us back to your ethical principles of faith so that we can witness the kingdom of God on earth. 
Help us to discern which relationships, commitments, and communities are worthwhile and which are not. Show us your priorities, communal God, and transform our hearts so that your priorities become ours. We seek your compassion and tenderness as we journey together. Help us to be gentle with each other through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. <coughs>
how good and pleasant it is when we live together in unity. It is like a precious soil upon the head, running down upon the weary, upon the weary of the heaven, running down on the power of his nose. It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion. just 
off to our own thing, right? So, teamwork, helping one another. Makes it easier for anything. It makes it easier for anything and everything. That is exactly what I talked about. That's a good, good word to end on. So how about we pray and then you get, you're welcome to eat the first. <laughs> I should have said that. I didn't say that. <laughs> God, thank you for bringing us together, binding us together, uh, shaping us together as a community of faith. And yes, we come with individual gifts and uh, skills and things that we share and are needed in community, and we, we put them all together. We can do great things together. So thank you, because you call us to be here. You call us together as persons that you love and you so long to, be, um, to welcome us into a community of faith. So thank you for these young ones and how they're learning and growing and how they share and teach us as well. I pray a blessing on them in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. You're welcome to have some, have some more. Thank you to Tracy Zielinski. I don't know if you noticed, and she wrote our liturgies, and she is one of our nine women in faith. Um, I'm thankful that Reverend Beth allows us to have this special Sunday um, to recognize we are a sisterhood of faith, and it's nice that we have this special Sunday. Not all ministers give their united women in faith a chance for that. And we were formerly United Methodist women, same group, same ladies, same sisterhood, and same purpose to look for, um, to learn, and to promote um, the well being of children and women locally and around the world. Um, today, we're so happy to have Shari Gillis with us. She is our um, district president. And she's originally from Lake Wales, so from this side, but she's, uh, when she was working in the working world, she was um, with Belle Lindsay and Nintendo as a representative, and she has been married to her husband, Terry, for 49 years, and she has two children and one grandson who's seven years old, and she has been our in district leadership for five years, and we are just so happy to have her here as our guest and our speaker today. Um, something in United Methodist Women and United Women in Faith, we uh, do a special mission recognition, um, and so uh, we have made a donation in Shari's honor, and we have a life presenter with this pen today. We won't pay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. And now, Sherry Lewis. <laughs> yeah, she's going to read scripture first. I'm not. So I'm going to read the scripture first, and then we'll have Sherry. <laughs> so I'm reading from Luke's Gospel. This is chapter 13, verses 6 through 21. Jesus told this parable A man owned a fig tree planted in his vineyard. He came looking for fruit on it and found none. He said to his gardener, Look, I've come looking for fruit on this fig tree for the past three years, and I've never found it. Cut it down. Why should I continue depleting the soil's nutrients? Why should it continue depleting the soil's nutrients? The gardener responded, Lord, give it one more year, and I will dig around it and give it fertilizer. Maybe it will produce fruit next year. If not, then you can cut it down. Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. A woman was there who had been disabled by a spirit for 18 years. She was bent over and couldn't stand up straight. When he saw her, Jesus called her to him and said, Woman, you are set free from your sickness. He placed his hands on her, and she straightened up at once and praised God. 
The synagogue leader, incensed that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath, responded, There are six days which work is permitted. Come and be healed on those days, not on the Sabbath day. The Lord replied, Hypocrites, don't each of you on the Sabbath untie your ox or donkey from its stall and lead it out to get a drink? Then isn't it necessary that this woman, a daughter of Abraham, bound by Satan for 18 long years, be set free from her bondage on this Sabbath day? When he said these things, all his opponents were put to shame, but all those in the crowd rejoiced at all the extraordinary things he was doing. Jesus asked, What is God's kingdom like? To what can I compare it? It's like a mustard seed that someone took and planted in the garden. It grew and developed into a tree, and the birds in the sky nested in its branches. Again, he said, to what can I compare God's kingdom? It's like yeast, which a woman took and hid in a bushel of wheat flour until the yeast had worked its way through the hole. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me here this morning on United uh, Women in Faith Sunday. Once again, I'm Shari Gillis. I'm the Gulf Central District President of United Women in Faith and a longtime friend of Jean Vanderslaus. Her father, Reverend Joyner, was the pastor of the church that I grew up in. But I'd like to begin with a prayer, please. Almighty Father, breathe on me. Give me the words you wish me to share this morning. Let me honor you and speak your love. Bless this congregation and their communities. In the name of your beloved Son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. This year, United Women in Faith had a study on Luke 13, titled, Who Can We Be Together? We do a study every year uh, of some spiritual uh, verses. Um, the whole nation studies um, the verses that are chosen. In today's scripture, Luke 13, 6 through 21, it's just part of the study that I'm going to talk about today. In today's scripture, Jesus uses rich imagery, compelling parables, and convicting directives. We are called to act on the most ethical principles of our faith so that we can witness the kingdom of God on earth. We are to challenge damaging theologies. We are to create healthy rituals for abundant living. In Luke 13, 6 through 9, Jesus told the parable of the fig tree. In this parable, Jesus speaks in the voice of a man who has planted a fig tree in his vineyard. This man is upset that the tree is not producing fruit. He says to the gardener in the vineyard, Why should I keep this tree? If it has not done anything for me in three years, it's a waste of soil. The gardener, who may likely have some insight about how crops grow, responds, Sir, leave it alone for one more year. I'll put manure on it. If it bears fruit next season, great. But if not, cut it down. The gardener offers one possible solution from his own work, something the owner might not have come up with on his own. Today, a fig tree can take three to five years to bear its first fruit. The owner did not want to waste any soil to produce fruit. He didn't think tending the tree anymore was worth it. But the nature of the gardener's job involved work and attention and patience. The gardener had practical knowledge. Can we be the gardener, working with the community, paying attention to the need, and patient with the needs of our community? Or are we like the owner, ready to move on when things don't turn out as we had planned? We are blessed with practical knowledge as the gardener through the promptings of the Holy Spirit. 
Then in Luke 13, 10 through 17, Jesus healed a disabled woman in the synagogue on the Sabbath, the day of rest. With Jesus' touch, the woman stood upright and began praising God immediately upon her healing. The leader of the synagogue, the person who oversees the law, became incensed. He riled up the crowd in the synagogue. How dare Jesus heal on the Sabbath, the day of rest? Jesus reacted to the accusations with indignation himself. He pointed out the hypocrisy of the leader's complaint. The crowd had more regard for the needs of an animal than the far greater need of a human being. Their zeal for the law compromised their love of their neighbor. Upon hearing Jesus' words, the synagogue crowd felt ashamed. They began rejoicing at all the wonderful things that he was doing. In this passage, Jesus engaged the people and the structures of the law. Does the law become a boundary? How do we discern the limitations of the boundary? Is it because we have always done it that way? Are we not to love our neighbor as ourselves? We want to build more sustainable and compassionate communities of care. We want to have a church that reflects the world we live in without barriers, without regard to ability. We must challenge our assumptions about bodies, communities, healing, and justice. Jesus in these scriptures stands between the necessary everyday work of bringing people back into the beloved community and the structures that prefer people to be alienated from it. When that disabled, unnamed woman was freed from her affliction, she praised God. She praised God. The last two parables of today's scripture is Luke 13, 18 through 21. After healing the unnamed woman, Jesus asked the crowd at the synagogue a question. What is the kingdom of God like? Jesus answered his own questions. He used the parable of the mustard seed as his answer. Mustard seeds are small and therefore well equipped to travel well, fast, and far. They get caught up in the hairs of animals, swept up in the wind, and attached to the hairs of bees. If they were bigger or too heavy, they might not travel as well. Likewise, the gospel should be so understandable, so relatable, and so irresistible that it goes viral among us. The gospel should be so easy to engage that it travels with us without us having to do too much. Are we living in a way that is invitational? Is our witness one that is warm and relatable, or is it cold or punitive? Are we scaring people into the faith, or are we inviting them into a more abundant way of life? Traveling well doesn't necessarily mean it's always popular. It means structural barriers are solved. It means that people of all ages, races, genders, geographic locations, sexualities, and abilities can find a place in the community, God's kingdom on earth. Jesus talks about the faith of a mustard seed and its power. Mustard seeds are powerful because they are designed to travel quickly and well. Of course, not all things that travel well are morally or socially good. COVID comes to mind. <laughs> but what should be held at the core of our journey as we travel together? As a mustard seed, it, it's, it is not simply traveling well. When we go from place to place, does our footprint leave destruction or life or something else? Then Jesus asked them, What shall I compare the kingdom of God to? He answered with the parable of the least, of the yeast. The parable was understandable to women especially. It was a daily activity of women at that time. 
When yeast is hydrated by lukewarm water with sugar added, it becomes activated. This activated yeast is introduced to flour and becomes leavened bread, an activity that many people in COVID began again or for the first time during lockdown. We also learned new ways to share the gospel and discovered many who had been left out and who were marginalized during COVID. But together, we can put the power of the Holy Spirit into our outreach and missions, and with prayer stirred in, we can produce a beautiful, beloved community, and the taste will be divine. Jesus used the relevant images of the mustard seed and the yeast to make a point. As we travel together, think about who is in your community. The community of believers is just one community. We belong to families, to sewing clubs, to political organizing clubs, to neighborhood associations, just for a few examples. What kind of seeds have you planted? Is your yeast fresh? Galatians 5, 22 through 23 says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. The Word of God for the people of God. Who can we be together with the fruit of the Spirit we can be God's beloved community. Thank you for having me today. Thank you so much. Let's pray together. Oh God, I give you thanks for your word that always, uh, well, in this instance, it has these stories that are um, just so connected to some everyday things that, um, that in a way that is, um, started to say light, but in a way that really sometimes can just hit us upside the head, just says what we need to hear. Um, some lessons. So God, um, thank you that Shari unpacked them for us. I'm grateful for uh, the gardener in the story of the fig tree and just the challenge that we be like that gardener, patient and listening and applying just practical things to do for um, people as a way of sharing love and showing love and kindness and tending to them. And God, I too pray that we would be a healing place, a place without barriers to all who come seeking help and healing and a word of hope. God, in, in small ways, I pray that you would help us to um, be activated, um, be energized for sharing a good word, um, to share your love and the joy that we find in relationship with you and how you have called us together in community. Help us to share that in loving, caring, wonderful ways with those we meet. God, again, I give thanks for your word. I give thanks for how you teach us and shape us as a community of people. And as your people gather together on this Sabbath day, we join our voices and we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 
I invite you to stand. Our hymn of response is for charity and love for Dale.
I don't know if you all have had the opportunity to see the children's church, but Dave painted it. And you know, the fellowship hall is, is old and sometimes it, it's just. <laughs> <laughs> yet possibly remembered for a lifetime by the recipient. Little gestures, a simple smile from someone passing by, letting, letting someone go before us at, in the line at the grocery store, holding the door for another, saying please and thank you, reaching out to say hello, a greeting card, 
a prayer, a flower, a compliment, a listening ear, a hug, forgiveness for ourselves and all others, and grace. These things, which most of us learn as little children, are building blocks to a better humanity. We need to love and encourage each other. We need to rely on one another. We need to accept one another. We desperately need to respect all living things. We are not superior to any one thing on this planet. Please forgive us and help us, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for the sick and suffering and all who care for them. We pray for those for whom this day will be long and hard, for those struggling with despair or depression, for those in hospital and at home. In your goodness and mercy, grant them health of body, soundness of mind, and peace of heart. Lord, in your mercy, we remember in our prayers friends and loved ones who have enriched our lives and are now departed from us. We pray for those who have died in recent days, praying especially for the family of Bonnie Ponton. May your light shine on them forever and our lives be richer because of their memory. Lord, in your mercy, Faithful God, as we go out into the world, help us to entrust the past to your mercy, the present to your love, and the future to your wisdom. Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. And all God's people said, Amen. So I have the joy of sharing with you that this week we raised all of the requested funds for the fire alarm system to be installed. In the bulletin that says we need this much more, this much more. Um, so one gift that came in this week, the one that kind of puts us over over the top, came from an unlikely source, sort of. Um, First United Methodist Church of Lakeland. They sent us a check for one thousand one hundred and forty-five dollars. And they did that as a way of affirming our ministry and our presence here in Lakeland, serving with them, the community that we are in. Um, it's a show of support reflecting the blessing and the gift of the United Methodist Connection. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. Once again, we are better and stronger together. Um, I want to just read, there's a hymn that is in the faith we sing that we sing it every so often. We sang it not too long ago, so I didn't choose it to sing again this Sunday because for this wonderful theme, which, again, uh, I love so much. But um, it's verse 4. It says, Together by grace we witness and work, remembering Jesus in whom we grow strong. Together we serve in spirit and truth, Remembering love is the strength of our song. Thank you for all of your gifts and tithes and offerings.
praying that what we share with others will bring them healing, <coughs> hope, grace, and peace. We pray this in the name of Jesus and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. We are going to go out singing, Great is Thy Faithfulness. It's going to look good for you.